Good morning, brothers and sisters. This morning, we are going to look at a couple of other points that have come up that are relative to our studies. This is a very serious situation. It's something that we're going to need to address. It's something that we're going to need to consider. I believe we need to join together in prayer and ask for guidance and wisdom as we hear what is being presented so that we may tread very carefully and consider directly that which we're about to embark upon. So can we all please bow our heads in prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, there are many things that are ongoing right now. We come before you today. We lay before you concerns we ask, Father, for your guidance, for your blessing, and for your wisdom. We seek that your will is done in our lives, <clears throat> for without you, we cannot go forward. Direct us now, bless us in all things, that help to honor your name and your character. We pray for what is about to be said, that we may understand Help us to understand, to discuss, and to consider carefully all that is ongoing right now. Be with us now, please, Father. For this we ask, for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, what we're about to listen to was posted yesterday on WhatsApp. I'm very grateful, Stephen, that you posted this. I had looked. I was not able to find it. I did listen to it as I drove yesterday. And there's there's quite a bit that we're going to need to consider. So if you, if you would, Theodore, please play this. I have, I have asked to explain, to explain why, why I have um, um, chosen, chosen to speak with the Canadian Zoom meeting any longer uh, after the disappointment of July 18th, 2020. I did nothing publicly until the end of July 2023 and at that point I was convicted to write out the prophetic message that I was understanding uh, there's more details to it I'm just being brief and I connected with the zoom broadcast that have been going forth from Texas and from Canada old friends that I knew on both both sides of the border and began to share in those Zoom meetings, and they reached a point where the issue of Daniel 11:14 is the robbers of thy people, the United States, or is it Rome, uh, came up. It had come up in previous Zoom presentations previous, prior to the one where I determined I needed to withdraw, um, but it hadn't been so clearly defined as the Zoom meeting that led me to not interact with the Zoom meetings from that point on until this recent one. Uh, the reason for that is <clears throat> my concern, um, and it, it has my concern has been recognized, so I kind of confirmed that it was a, a valid consideration on my part, but my concern was is that there were many countries around the world that are following the articles. Uh, the people that were doing the Zoom meeting in Canada and the people, the, the brethren that are doing the Zoom meeting in Texas, they were doing their own ministry. This, I wasn't trying to usurp anyone's ministry. I was just being a guest speaker and I was trying to promote the articles that uh, my son and I have been putting out onto the internet. And since we started putting those articles out uh, at the end of July, 2023, there currently is a 137 nations around the world that are reading these articles. And my concern the first time the issue came up that I withdrew was that there are people around the world that are babes in this message in relation to the brethren that I understand that are leading out and following the Zoom meetings in Texas and Canada. Uh, by that, I mean, to give you an example, I know that there's one nation in the world, uh, a third, what you would call a third world country, that their 
they're having to read the articles, download the articles, or listen to the articles that we're putting out on the internet on phones. And uh, be because they don't have computers, they don't have that type of financing. And the only reason that they can be following them is because one or two of them had a phone and connected with us and explained that they did not, the brethren that were following these things with them did not have phones. So we purchased many phones for that particular uh, country, I, I think two different countries for, for certain. Um, one of the countries got back to us that their difficulty was is that there they have to buy their time on the internet. So it was costing them uh, quite a bit even to download the articles that they wanted to do. But the other country where we sent a large quantity of, of phones, my point is, is it was evidence to us that the availability of the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, and the pioneers uh, that we have here in North America, both Canada and the United States, and the finances that we have in these two nations, uh, for one thing, it holds us much more accountable to when someone's given much, then there's much more accountability. So our two nations are have a easier time accessing, testing things, looking at things in these third world countries. I hope that's not derogatory to label them that way. And my concern the first time I pulled out of the Zoom meeting is that there are people I understand around the world now in 137 countries that may very well not have the familiarity with uh, the message that is represented in the Time of the End magazine or the final rise and fall of the King of the North or the Habakkuk's Table series. Uh, and those of us in the United States and Canada who, that are following these things on Zoom, the, those of the brethren that I knew that were participating, they had a familiarity with this message. And so I personally held them more accountable uh, than someone that is uh, just beginning in this message. And I was concerned that any kind of controversial discussion in these Zoom meetings might produce a stumbling block. It always does. Satan always uses it. If there's two opinions in our Zoom meeting, those two opinions are going to uh, pop up wherever people are listening. So I realized, once I realized in the Zoom, the first time I withdrew from the Zoom meetings, once I realized that there was a controversy, then I determined that I wasn't going to go on the Zoom anymore, and, uh, and the Canadians and the Texans could continue their Zoom meetings, but I wasn't going to allow that to be an avenue to cause confusion among the those that haven't had the great privileges that we've had in, in North America. A at the same time, I understood that those that were leading out in the Texas Zoom meeting um, Texas is just not that far from me, and I, and I know these brethren very well. Uh, I understood that their sympathies, uh, their conviction lied right where mine did on the controversy over whether Rome is what establishes the vision or the United States is what establishes the vision. I knew their sympathies were in agreement with me, and I knew that if I had simply that first time said, well, I'm not going to do the Canadian Zoom meetings anymore. I'm just going to do them for Texas. That that also would be a great potential to cause division between these two ministries that are doing a regular Zoom meetings. And I was a Johnny come lately. They'd been doing it for years. I, I don't do anything for years. And when I finally get involved, I come into their Zoom meetings. I didn't want to be the one that that divided those two groups that were working so well together. So that first time I chose to just withdraw from it all, I wasn't going to speak on any Zoom meetings, whether it was the ones in Texas or Canada. And then I contacted uh, the brother that is holding and, and promoting the position that the robbers of thy people in Daniel M14 is the United States, and we had a fairly long phone call. And when the phone call was done, um, he encouraged me to go ahead and present what I understood. And I told him that I understood that he had a responsibility as a Christian to 
you know, if he was convicted of something to stand for it, but still the discussion was, is I didn't want to get into a place where this controversy would spread around the world. And when I, when we ended that phone call, I, I understood that, that I was going to be allowed to present as I was. Um, and we, and he and I were both understanding that the, the discussion or the, the study about which side was right was going to be handled in a more uh, – in a forum where the, the differences did not turn into an argument and confusion. So this last Sabbath, I presented again, and in the meantime, I began writing articles that we're putting onto our website on the subject of who establishes the vision based on Daniel eleven fourteen. 14. And at the end of the presentation on Sabbath, a discussion followed up on the Zoom meeting. um, And it was very, from my perspective, even though I didn't listen, but to bits and pieces of it, the testimony I have from people that did stay engaged with that conversation, who I have confidence in, it was was divisive. and, And other issues came up, which is exactly what I feared. Um, so I determined that I, I'm not going to do the Canadian, um, zoom meetings any longer because the environment there, I can only expect is going to be in opposition to anything I have to say. And I don't, I, I will set forth what I understand about who establishes the vision in the articles. And I will also do it in the Texas zoom meetings next Sabbath. I will keep marching through that theme. The reason that I will do that is, and I've been clear about it from the very beginning of all this, is that I did not, I did not believe that this difference of opinion was simply a difference of opinion between two brothers. I thought it was a prophetic. uh, There was a prophetic purpose in it that had been orchestrated by the line of the tribe of Judah. Jesus had brought about this controversy and. In the first article I wrote about this, who establishes the vision, I think it was the first, maybe it was the second, I put in a quote where Sister White says, if other means fail, God will allow heresies to come in among us to uh, force his people to study. It's a paraphrase, but it's pretty close to what she says. And I believe that is what had happened, and now I'm convinced of it after the – in the evening on Sabbath, uh, I, uh, some things came together for me, and I am certain that the argument that is taking place over who establishes the vision in Daniel 11 and 14 um, is the identical, and by, by identical, what I mean is identical. It's the identical argument that the Millerites dealt with with the Protestants. Um, I intend to show that in articles and in the coming Zoom meetings. And because of that, I realized that the only controversy or the only reference on the 1843 Pioneer Chart, which Sister White says was directed by the hand of the Lord and should not be altered, um, the only controversy that's on that chart that isn't a direct reference from biblical prophecy is the argument of the Millerites against the Protestants on Daniel 11, 14, the, the, 14, the Protestants argued that it was a, a Antiochus Epiphanes, and the, William Miller knew it was Rome. And Saturday evening, I recognized the prophetic uh, evidence that this argument, whether the United States is the robbers of thy people that established the vision, or Rome is the uh, robbers of thy people that establish the visions, that it is the identical argument. And therefore, the argument over Rome at the beginning of the three angels' messages. And what I mean by that is the movement of the Millerites was the movement of the first and second angels. And the movement that began in 1989 is the movement of the third angel. And together, the beginning and ending of Adventism, if you want to view it like that, is the the three angels' messages and the controversy that was at the beginning 
in the first angel's message is now appeared in the line of prophecy at the end and jesus illustrates the end with the beginning and i'm identifying for you if you're willing to hear and come back to the zoom meetings or read the articles that this controversy is identical to the protestant millerite argument that's re reflected on the 1843 chart and therefore we're in at least one of the last controversies and in these previous two articles on this subject um, one of the quotes said from sister white that old controversies will be revived new controversies will be introduced and we're now in the period where the final cleansing of the temple the temple of the 144,000 is taking place uh, in agreement with Malachi and the messenger of the covenant, who is Christ, who's the line of the tribe of Judah, is purging the gold and silver, the Levites. And Sister White is clear that uh, when the Lord or the man with the dirt brush, the dirt brush man, um, purges his floor, uh, he does it through words of truth. And this discussion about who establishes the vision is part of the final purging of the 144,000. It's the sifting, and it needs to be understood that way. And as I said, in the, in the discussion that followed the Zoom meeting this recent Sabbath, two days ago, uh, people may not have understood it, but they brought up, they brought up prophetic issues that needed to be addressed all by themselves and there then it all became there all those issues are there and there are brethren around the world that are no doubt less familiar with these things than those of us in north america so before i retired on that has a camp meeting scheduled for this weekend this coming sabbath and those that are leading out those that we have been supporting had to change what they were going to present this coming camp meeting in order to address the issue about who establishes the vision. Is it the United States or is it Rome? And that was, for me, that was the Lord saying, your concern about this being something that will infect the entire planet is valid. You need to back out of the environment where what you are presenting is taken as if it's uh, unimportant and insignificant, and it's uh, approached from a pluralistic attitude. Uh, one of the things in the discussion after the Zoom meeting last Sabbath, and one of the things that has been brought up repeatedly once this began, is, well, you're both teaching the same thing. You're both saying the same thing. And I'm here to tell you from my experience in discussions of biblical truth if you do not possess the biblical aptitude and the presence of the holy spirit that allows you to see that the united states and the roman catholic church are two different things then what you need to do in the discussion is just keep silent and listen they are not the same thing the united states is not the Catholic Church. They're two different entities. So to throw the argument into the mix, they're both saying the same thing, is to provide evidence <clears throat> that you need to be a listener, not a talker. And when you begin to point to the role that I have played in this movement, and that becomes an issue, that also is an invalid argument about this discussion. If we're going to determine correctly who the robbers of thy people are that establish the vision, it needs to be determined based upon the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, not upon what role someone has fulfilled in this movement. Because as soon as you take up that subject, then there's a whole other can of worms that is opened up that needs to be addressed. And there were other issues. My point is, is I will be held accountable for the experience that I've had as a Seventh-day Adventist uh, since I became a Seventh-day Adventist. 
And my experience has been in promoting Bible prophecy, which I, which I understood to be Bible truth around the world for over two decades. And my experience tells me that there is a correct way to discuss biblical truth and an incorrect way. And I am under the conviction that I cannot present in the Canadian group any longer without it being a source of confusion. And I have the fruits of that conviction uh, in this nation in Africa that is now struggling with this issue that began in North America. So I would encourage you, if you have an interest in this, um, to tune into the Zoom meetings these coming Sabbaths. We're going to be there on a regular basis. And before we change subjects, we're going to be working through um, how Rome establishes the vision. And I'm the articles that I'm writing are now on that same subject. I would encourage you to go to our website and start following those articles as well. The Texas Zoom meeting, I'm probably not giving it the right title. Um, but I think that it would be worthwhile because it's clear that, in my mind, it's clear, and the articles try to uphold this, that these first 15 verses of Daniel 11 are the beginning of the vision of Daniel 11. And in those verses, the beginning of the vision of Daniel 11 illustrate the end of the vision of Daniel 11. And the end of the vision of Daniel 11 is when Michael stands up and human probation closes. And I'm suggesting to you that verse 14 of Daniel 11, it has been identified by the line of the tribe of Judah by the Holy Spirit through the pen of Daniel as representing the key that, is, that identifies what this vision is that Solomon says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And that vision is in agreement with the truth that was unsealed in 1989. And that truth was the last six verses of Daniel 11. And those last six verses identify the final Rise and fall of the king of the north. Or in the terminology of John in Revelation 13, they identify the healing of the deadly wound. And the whole story is about Rome. The whole story is about Rome because Rome establishes the vision. And to change that symbol that has been in Adventism since the Millerite history and saying, no, what establishes the vision is the image of Rome the image of the beast, the United States, is to demonstrate that everything that we have presented since 1989 concerning the last six verses of Daniel 11 is invalid. I, I think it's the truth that needs to be investigated by any and all that are recognizing from the events that are going on around us in the political world, in the economic world, in the social world, um, in the military world, that probation is about to close. And the Bible says, surely the Lord thy God does nothing except he reveal it through his servants, the prophets. I'm suggesting that this revelation about who establishes the vision is a key that you as a student of prophecy need to be certain about and certain enough that you know that United States and the Catholic Church are not the same thing. Thank you for your time. Now, what exactly was the announcement that the Canadian group has given? Yeah, the Canadian group has has just said that they're going to continue doing their studies on the second and fourth Sabbath, and that if people want to join the American group, they can send their email to Vicky so um, so they can get notified. So that, that, so they're just that's all they're saying. Jeff's no. going to be working just on the U.S. line, and they're going to just still have their second and fourth Sabbath, you know, at the same time that the American group is having theirs, I guess. Okay. The situation, as as I had understood this, and what, what Elder Jeff was not saying is that he and Colin had a very lengthy telephone conversation that it took 
almost a month before they had this conversation. And apparently, after the last time he spoke on the Canadian Zoom, there was quite a discussion that led to quite a bit of acrimony. And it has weighed heavily on him from the way that he just presented this particular announcement. So I find it very disturbing on one hand that this would be occurring the way that it is, yet this is something that was about to happen no matter how we look at it. Now, we all have a responsibility. As we are looking and seeking to understand these prophecies, when we clearly understand the prophecies, we are responsible to be able to make them understood with and by others. Would you agree or not agree? Well, yeah, we need to be able to present what we understand and allow the Holy Spirit to work in people's lives. I mean, the problem that I have with this is just the type of control over ideas um, in this manner is not something I could ever do. People have to make their own decisions and discussions. I mean, if you have a disagreement and, and you don't want to put it out on the public, which I have no problem having a disagreement be public in the context within the movement itself. Now, Jeff is saying that, uh, well, there's people in other countries and they don't have the resources that we do. Now, you know, this idea of 137 other countries doesn't really mean too much to me. You know, I mean, my papers go all over the world, too. People look at things just because somebody hits your website doesn't mean, you know, that, that all those countries are absorbed in studying everything in detail. But um, that's not really our responsibility, what other people do. God can lead whoever he wants to lead to the truth. You know, I mean, Jeff could have private discussions with Colin if they want to resolve it. I'm, I'm not really sure I understand fully why it's such a contentious issue. I mean, all they're trying to do is discern somehow. Uh, I, I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't understand the controversy. So, you know, so I'm not following what their controversy is. We know Rome establishes a vision. I don't think Colin teaches that Rome and the United States are the same entity. As Jeff says, I can't imagine Colin taking that position, but you never know. I mean, I'm just not following it. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on that. I would say, you know, this this whole pattern that, that, that Jeff has had through the years when he hears, you know, people that he has confidence in giving him information. I have confidence in nobody to give me information uh, that I'm going to then make such a decision based upon. I mean, people will tell me things, but it doesn't it doesn't affect my relationship with someone else. But Jeff has done this way too often to cut people off based upon information that he receives from people he has confidence in. People have a distorted perception of everything that happens. None of us, I wouldn't have confidence in anybody's perception about something. If, if I have a problem with a person, I talk to that person, not to somebody else. Because, I don't know, I can't have a confidence in a person's perception of another person. But, uh, so I find that disturbing. I think the the points that I took away from this, when I listened to exactly what he was saying, when he had addressed that there was an issue in how they were seeing this, I think we have we've observed quite a bit from the public record that Elder Jeff's position has always been that Rome establishes the vision. Mm -hmm. Colin's position from what was being assessed looked to be that the United States, whether it was the United States as a whole or United States as the army of Rome, was establishing the vision today. Now, 
the issue that that came from this was they had a conversation after a series of presentations had been done in the month of May. Elder Jeff gave a presentation in the month of June addressing his concern over this with what he and Colin had talked about. Now that he has received information from Africa about a camp meeting that is going to take place this weekend and that they have changed their focus of this camp meeting and they're now going to discuss where the establishment of the vision really is that it's bothering him. Now, there are points that we have been addressing in these morning studies that have not been touched on by, from what I can see, by either Colin or by Jeff. And they are very, very, very valid points for us to be considering. Yeah, well, I think that, that Jeff, you know, with his cutting himself off from other people, like, and even cutting himself off, you know, from our studies, you know, just dismissing him, us based upon rumors, just like he's done with Colin's, Collins group. It doesn't allow you to to have new understanding, right? Like God is is unfolding light. And you know, there's so much that we have learned by being open to receive light from wherever God's going to send it. And that's the way I believe that that we come to understand the truth. So we've re-examined things. It's established that the foundation was solid. It would resolve their controversy if they had taken the time to go through what we've gone through, that process. So we've gone through a process where we want to receive light from God. Right. We're not, we're not saying we have all the light and people should just follow us. Correct? No disagreement on my part. Yeah. How and so. Rest- how are the rest of you seeing this? Yeah, I'd like to hear from other people. Well, Daniel 11, 14, we know that uh, it's dealing with the history of Rome, being the robbers of the people there. So we know that the United States didn't exist in that sort of BC era. And But Colin, he's maybe making, making an application to our time. Mm-hmm. All began the United States, and then they uh, forced out the rest of the world. So I can sort of see maybe like some application uh, being applied, you know, to the United States, uh, um, like Collins Megan. But I would, I would still think he would understand that Rome is the the power there. That in in the the context of Daniel eleven fourteen, I think he would understand that. And um, so, to me, it's uh, it just seems to be amplifying. I, I don't I don't see what's the big issue. Yeah, I definitely don't see what the big issue is because because I mean it depends where you're making the application. There is a place in which the United States uh, comes in as in, in, is involved because we have an application with. Um, now we have the king of the south being the Soviet Union, right? And the robbers of thy people, you know, so we're going to take that history of between 1863 and 1989, right? Based upon that if you take robbers of thy people and you add it together, the, the Hebrew numbers, you get 7651, the seven times of Leviticus 26, which is symbolized of the 126 shekels. But we have the robbers of thy people being Rome, the papacy, right, shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. So we put it in that history. But Colin's applying it to a later history, right? Correct. So, I mean, the United States does sort of take a role there, but I don't know. To me, it seems like the the differences between uh, Jeff and Colin are actually much, much deeper than over this issue. I mean, it has to do with, you know, time setting and dates and symbolic use of numbers and all those types of things that Colin had been presenting. 
I would have thought that that would be a bigger issue. Um, this seems to be kind of a false issue. I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm saying I think uh, it's uh, to do with the application because, like, uh, here in Africa, there are a lot of mm -hmm. uh, people who do not know, like, uh, who who is going to enact a Sunday law because a lot of people they think like it's a papacy. I think that's the reason why he even uh, mentioned like groups uh, from here in Africa because a lot of people like when you ask them, they think like it's the purpose who enact the Sunday law like in Congress. That, that's where the problem is like here. A lot of people are confused on on that issue. Okay, but but Jeff's not going to help that problem in the way that he's approaching it, right? Yes, yes. No, he is not. He's not. He's not. He's not. It's just that a lot of people, like, when you ask them, like, uh, especially when they saw, like, the the, the, papa, the, the Pope was attending the, the, the what? The G7. Everyone, like, is saying, no, we've seen, like, he's doing that, which simply means he's pushing for a son. That's how they, like, people, like, are seeing it. They don't look at the apostate Protestants or the evangelicals. No, they don't. They, them, they're just looking at everyone, like, hello people here in Africa, they just look at the papacy like, no, he's the one, he's the one, he's the one. Not knowing that the image of the beast is uh, the opposite Protestants. Then they don't see that. Okay. Yeah, so so the problem, so Jeff doesn't really understand the problem in Africa then. Is that what you're saying? Yes, he doesn't, he, he doesn't, he doesn't know like uh, how people are understanding the, the whole issue. Because uh, the establishment of the vision like in Daniel uh 11, 14, we know that it's wrong, but when we come to who's going to enact the Sunday law, we know that uh, it's the image of the beast. But uh, when... Yeah, it's uh, the United States. The United of, States is the one that, that, that brings the Sunday law, and that's clear in the spirit of prophecy. Yes, but a lot of people, like, they think, like, it's the papacy, because when they see him, like, what, like, Pope Francis is doing, them, they think, like, no. That is done. That is done. You say no. He's not. He's you. They, they've read the 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 Lado, the Dato C. So them they think like no. It's him. It's him. Everything. So even Jeff, I think he doesn't know what is happening here. He doesn't know. Yeah. Well, and part of the problem that Jeff has is he tends to listen to information sort of as hearsay, and he doesn't doesn't take the time to. I'm sort of to get a full view of something. So I'm I'm not, you know, I can't really say exactly what Jeff knows and doesn't know, but it, this seems to me to be kind of, you know, wrong headed. It's not, doesn't seem to be, uh, doesn't seem to be really addressing the issues and the problems of the Canadian and American groups. But yeah, so thanks for that, uh, McDonald, because it's, it's, um, because it's, you know, I mean, obviously, we don't really know what's going on in Africa. We don't have lots of contact with people from Africa all the time. We're not talking with people from Africa. And one of the problems is the time zone differences. It, it makes it difficult. Yeah, because the reason why I'm saying so, because I've, uh, I've joined groups like from guys from East Africa, that's uh, Uganda and Kenya. And whenever they post like things, then they talk about the papacy. Whenever they talk, they post things. And I think they're the ones who are who normally like join those groups. These guys from East Africa, because uh, even when um, uh, Tabo used to come, they were focused and centered on East Africa there, and also Zimbabwe and uh, Sudan somewhere there. Okay, so I I, I'm going to ask you. A, yeah, I, I'm going to ask you a very controversial question. So hope you're not offended by it. Um, so my impression, because, you know, I, I see people from Africa on Facebook all the time. And and it seems to be, and, and it could be because of technological issues and so forth, but it seems that they don't have a total grasp of Seventh-day Adventism, even when they're Seventh-day Adventists. That they seem to, they seem to have, you know, there are there are different people from Africa, obviously. So that, you know, it's kind of like group. Africa is a big place, and there's all kinds of different groups, and it's hard to know who's who. But they seem to follow things that are sort of sensational and flashy. And uh, there, you know, there are some very solid, you know, scriptural 
Africans, you know, so it's obviously, you know, you, you can't group everybody the same, but it's sometimes frustrating for me to try to communicate to them because they look at things rather simply. And, and maybe it's just, you know, I live in North America and I've, I have lots of opportunities to read books for years and years and understand the issues. But, but the thing is, there are some people from Africa that are very solid. So I don't think that, that that can be an excuse for those that aren't solid. Can, can you comment on that, McDonald? Yes, yes, because uh, the way you've just explained, it's, 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 not, uh, it's not a reason. Because when we look at uh, even the message of Daniel chapter 11, verse uh, 40 to 45, when it came like to Africa, everyone had uh, that opportunity. When we look at the guys who brought the message, Bakan, these guys from Botswana, we accepted them and uh, we took time to um, have studies with them. You, you, you get the point. I think you know BK Bakan, who happened to be um, uh, this one, uh, Paminda's friend. They were friends at one time, even Chawat. Yeah. We took time. We, we used to have uh, camp meetings. Now the problem is uh, after the separation, a lot of people like uh, uh, the issue was here. It's like they want to know who to follow, not right. trying to understand. Now, now, yes. now, is it that some people chase the bread and fishes? Is there that aspect they, they, in Africa that there are people no, who are it, sort of looking for a worldly gain by following different groups? Yes. Yes, because uh, when you look like uh, even funding, if some people are like uh, doing the funding, like uh, they are funding them, they'll prefer to go for, for that group which is funding them. So that at the end of the day, they're, uh, they're, they're getting something, they're getting something. But when you look at uh, us, like when, us the way it is, like the charts, soft copy, we just have to publish them, um, even internet, not looking at like, who's going to give me money for data? No, I need just to organize money. I buy uh, bundles and uh, get connect connected. But some people, they just want like uh, handouts. That's the problem. And the problem comes in like uh, how uh, a lot of uh, us in Africa have been uh, trained by, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> the West. Yes, the West. Yeah. Handouts. At all times, wanting handouts. Yeah, so, me, I see that's a very big problem. So I would think when Jeff, you know, is giving people money for cell phones and stuff like that, uh, that's maybe not the best thing as far as promoting the truth. Yes, it's not. It's not. It's not. Because when you're doing that, it simply means uh, people are following you because uh, you're giving them something. It's not supposed to be so. People are supposed to follow the truth because it's the truth. That's why Christ said that the reason why you have come is because you ate. Meaning without food, you would have not come. I think you know that verse, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, and that's like people from Africa always are asking me for money and I don't give people from Africa money. Not because I don't care about them, because obviously I do, but I don't think it's going to benefit them. And, and also, I wouldn't know who to trust, who to give money to, whether they're, what they're telling me is true or not. People will tell me they're starving, that they have an orphanage and their kids are starving. And, you know, I, I don't know any of these people personally. So it, I, I don't think it would benefit them. It, it would, you know, it could actually do harm. You know, I'll pray for them and say, you know, Lord, God can help you. Um, but, you know, it's not going to be me. And, you know, and they try to make me feel guilty. Um, obviously, I care about people. So, you know, it's not like uh, I'm callous or anything. But I just don't think it's wise. Um, yeah, yeah. Especially when people claim to be believing uh, the message. And then I go on their Facebook page and I see all kinds of uh, worldly stuff. Then it's kind of like, you know you should be able to control your Facebook page. So anyway, so thank, thank you for that McDonald's. Um, it's uh, it's a, it's a sensitive issue. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution today. The situation that we have 
as we are as we are considering this, we are seeing again a a further division. And just as what had occurred during the Millerite time, they came from a fairly large movement down to just a, to some and then just to a few. And we've given reference back to this multiple times. Now, there's quite a bit that we have been addressing throughout this as we're going through Daniel 11, as we're looking at what Smith had written and considering some of the other winds of doctrine that have been going and blowing through the church. Now, while we were listening to this presentation, as we were listening to these comments, there was a, a document that I will share with you now just for our considerations. So, yeah, so just a, a comment on that, Dwight, just to vote. So, you know, what we see after, because I believe that we're in the 1850s as far as a parallel with Millerite history. So you're going to have the first day Adventists. We would put, you know, the Canadian American group in that class, the group that rejects October 22nd, 1844, parallels those that reject July 18, 2020. Uh, the Canadian group more closely aligned with those that for a time accepted October 22nd, 1844, um, but eventually departed because that there was those that were of that sort of group. But you continue to have this fracturing in the Millerite movement and, and different groups, you know, went different directions. Right. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of groups that come from that. So. Jeff is trying to put this in a controversy in Millerite history with the Protestants. And that doesn't really make any sense. You understand what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. So, you know, so in, in Millerite history, yes, they were believing that Antiochus Epiphanes is the one that exalts himself to establish the vision. But that wasn't an internal controversy within the Millerite movement. There was no one in the Millerite movement who was teaching uh, it was a tie kiss epiphanies. So to try to create that parallel uh, on one is it doesn't sh it shows a lack of understanding of the lines of where we are. But also it's just completely irrelevant as a controversy uh, within uh, Millerite history. It's, you know, so is if he was having this controversy with, you know, some other group, that would be a different story. But to take that controversy and say that this is a parallel, this is history being repeated, makes no sense. I think that's something that, that we are seeing because of, of our recent studies looking at this and considering the overall history. Now, the document that is before you was a non-published document. Portions of this did get published in second manuscript releases, but the whole document has not been published. Under the title of Truth to be Maintained, I have warnings to give to our people. There must be greater spiritual life and character given to our exposition of the scriptures. In every church, there should be held solemn seasons of earnest prayer to heaven for special revelations of the grace of God. Let every teacher humble his own heart, subdue his own excitable temper. There is to be a more direct unveiling of the truth. He who presents the truth of the prophecies in the right way <clears throat> will use scripture to explain scripture. He will make the Bible its own expositor. What is, what is said in this one paragraph, I have to take very personally. The enemy is wise in the work of leading men into false paths. The 29th chapter of Isaiah brings to view conditions the workers will have to meet as they carry forward the work of the third angel's message. The prophet declares, stay yourselves and wonder, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes, 
the prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord saith, For as much as this people draw near to me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, He made me not? Or shall the things framed say of him that framed it, He hath no understanding? <clears throat> It is not a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. Isaiah 29, verses 9 to 17. Here are represented some of the very things that have been taking place in Battle Creek in the introduction of strange suppositions. The Lord has marked how some of the men who acted as a prominent part in leading out of the work have gradually allowed themselves to be led by Satan's devisings. It is not a very little while, the prophet asks, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. In these words is outlined the true condition that exists among many of our people. Unfortunately, this is what we are seeing today. There is coming to the ranks of Seventh-day Adventist false sentiments. An inclination on the part of some ministers and physicians to abolish the light that God has been sending. Some of our leading men have been denying the faith and giving heed to fanciful and erratic teachings. This is a scheme of Satan to call the mind away from the truth and lead men to give time and thought to the study of theories that confuse the mind and leave an indistinct understanding of the way of the Lord. I am instructed to say, repeat not these errors or false teachings, but write the truth, speak the truth. Let the word of God speak in every place, vindicating the truth for this time. The truth will triumph. When objectionable sentiments are introduced, repeat them not in your discourses, but hold to the affirmative. The message I am instructed to give at this time is one that I have been charged again and again for many years to give. It is advance the truth. Satan has been well pleased with the work of those men and women who have used their influence to undermine the confidence of our people in the messages the Lord is sending through the spirit of prophecy. I have been instructed that those who have engaged in such a work should not be chosen to occupy positions as leaders, for, in, for the influence they exert and their misstatements concerning this agency in which they have no faith will result in making unbelief popular in our churches. Let no man or woman be entrusted with the responsibility in the church who will use the advantage of such a position would give them to advocate sentiments of unbelief, thus sowing the tares of heresy among believers. And it has sometimes been the cause are the case that when men have been reproved for this kind of work, they have begun a warfare against the messages sent by making light of the warnings and the reproofs. Now, at no point have I seen us making light of words of correction. I know from the two visits that I had to Arkansas that a point was addressed and it was addressed very directly, specifically by Elder Jeff, where he has stated 
that there have been many times that he placed trust in other men and he found that his trust was misplaced. The converse is also true, that when he has not fully trusted someone or has been led not to trust someone, he has been finding that those that he was led to mistrust were actually very honest and were quite supportive of what positions were he had been espousing. Yeah, and Jeff told me the same thing back in 2016. Nice. Weeding the strawberries and his strawberry patch with him. That you know it it so he knows this that he he trusts the wrong people and he listens to information about people that he finds later to be wrong but he never seems to be able to do anything about it so what can be done to make these men with strong traits of character realize that they need to be reconverted unless the experience comes to them they will never become members of the royal family children of the heavenly king they are wrapping themselves up in a garment of self-confidence the messages that the Lord sends them, that they may understand how much they need to be taught of him, they cast aside as idle tales, thus placing themselves where they will accept their own suppositions as divine revelations. With their deficient experience, they are unfitted to understand the dealings of the Lord with his people. That's fearful. Comment from the chat. Isaiah 29, 17, and I'm assuming Isaiah 32, 15 are similar verses. The fruitfulness comes from the spirit poured upon us from high. Lebanon is derived from Laban to be made white. So it's the message to Laodicea that we need to be purified. Any, any thought of that comment from the chat? Well, well, the only thing about the comment um, is that, so Jeff is claiming that this movement is supposed to be Philadelphian, which right. would mean that the message to the Laodiceans we would not need to heed because it doesn't apply to us, right? Sadly. Yeah. And of course, we know that that's the lesson that we need to heed because we think we're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, but we do not know that we're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And so we can't receive of the remedy that God has for us, which is the three angels' messages. So it's 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 unfortunate. Great and wonderful changes <clears throat> are taking place in the world. Wonderful changes are also taking place among God's professing people. And these changes God foresaw. The mind <coughs> Excuse me. The minds of men who once were led by the wisdom of the word of truth are passing through dark experiences. They have followed the imagination of unsanctified wills, and that which was once accounted as precious, they no longer value. They have lost their bearings. The suppositions of the great deceiver have been greedily received because they were in accordance with their own hearts and judgment. The judgment of those who have thus allowed themselves to be deceived is no longer reliable. The fruitful field has become a forest. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth at the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Therefore thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed. Neither shall his face now wax pale. And when he seeth his children, 
the work of mine hands in the midst of him. They shall sanctify my name and shall sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. Verses 18 through 24. Our brethren in positions of responsibility need to experience daily the converting power of God upon heart and mind and soul before they can hope to advise and labor unselfishly. The kind of planning that would make one man a center and pattern cannot be carried out. This is not the way in which the Lord works. He works through different individual minds to accomplish his purposes and in the simplest ways that they may reflect the great outshining of his love. When one man thinks that his mind <clears throat> is to outline the large moves in the work of God, that his abilities are to accomplish the greatest work, he limits the power of God to fulfill his purposes in the earth. Good morning, brother. And yes, um, we we have just finished going over Elder Jeff's statement. And that's why we're going through this document right now. God would have the truths of the third angel's message firmly established in the hearts of his people. Not one pin or pillar of the faith he has so graciously given us is to be moved. The wily foe will bring in specious arguments to substantially to substantiate the theories he desires to have take the place of the truth in the minds of the people. Assertions will be made that have no foundation in truth. The words of scripture interwoven with a mass of error will be brought forward to confuse the mind. But we might be held in controversy as long as time should last if we were to listen to all the applications of scripture that might be made to substantiate erroneous theories. God has not given the scriptures that they may be used to uphold a false position that would unsettle the minds regarding the light that he has clearly given. If men depart from the faith they have once held and use the word which they once used in confirming their faith, now to support error, they do so to their own destruction. We are forbidden by God to repeat their arguments. Yet I have been shown that this has been done by some who have accepted the false teachings of those who have departed from the faith. For the past few years, the work in some of our conferences has been diverted from its true object. And if permitted to go on in the same lines, the cause of truth would be greatly dishonored. The Lord would have all the workers now come into line to advance the truth as it is proved by the word of God and by the providence of God in his continual vindication of it. I am instructed to warn our people against placing in high positions of trust those men and women who seem to be adrift on any points of the faith and who, if our writings did not stand as faithful witness as to what constitutes truth, would lead away from the faith. Those who know of the grand and holy work done in the past, of the experience of the past 50 years in the cause of present truth, must witness to the revelations of the Spirit of God. I am thankful that Elder Haskell can connect with the California Conference and help to conduct the work on right lines. I have felt that he should be left free to a large extent to work in ministerial lines, leaving the business burdens of the conference for businessmen to handle. Strong, consecrated men should stand as his helpers. As far as possible, I have endeavored to write out from time to time the experiences in connection with the work of the third angel's message, that it may be seen what was the work God gave me to do from the beginning. Elder Haskell, Elder Loughborough, Elder Butler, there are but few of the old pioneer workers still living who saw the wonderful works that God did to confirm the truth. 
these old standard bearers are to be respected. When new and strange theories are introduced, it is time to call a halt and revive the past te- workings of the Lord's grace and power among us as a people. As I have seen the old standard bearers fall one by one, I have longed, oh so much, that some might be spared, as was the disciple John, to declare the great works of the Lord. The enemies of John, when they were not suffered to kill the aged servants of God, banished him to the Isle of Patmos. I urge you to study the epistles of John, that which was from the beginning, the apostle wrote, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life, for life, the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare declare we unto you, that we also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. 1 John 1 to 3. We are ever to seek to keep the evidences of the past before us. We must not give heed to the voice of those who would lessen the force of the testimony which God has given to his servants to communicate to men. To the younger men and women, I would say, if the truth of God is stamped upon the heart and mind and soul, you will regard the old waymarks. You will never lose sight of the grand truths that have made us what we are. Let the light shine forth in distinct rays to the world. The Lord calls for thoroughly converted men who are students of the word and who will give the truth to the people in pure doctrine. The missionary spirit needs to be revived in all our churches. Every church member should feel the burden of a special work, a special commission from the one who gave himself a living sacrifice for the salvation of the world. The son of God has pledged himself to be the efficiency of everyone who will unite with him in the work of saving souls. Now, what we have addressed today, from what I have listened to and what we have been and, and what we have been sharing, is our point currently in the study of Daniel 11 is to come to a clearer understanding so that we may understand the lines that can be drawn, and to make sense of the different prophecies and different symbols that we are finding. Too often, the symbolic use of numbers have been being set aside by others. Yet, from the foundation and central pillar of the Advent faith, we are given a message from none other than Palmoni the wonderful number. Numbers are important. There may be those that have celebrated not having to look upon, study, or use symbolic numbers. However, they do so at their own peril. We have much to concern ourselves with, We have much to prepare for ourselves in order that we may truly understand that which we need at this time. But we definitely need to approach the scriptures as learners. Um, We know that there's so much that we don't understand. And uh, I I have a hard time cutting ourselves off from others just because we disagree on it, well, we can say they're major points, but I think they're minor points because sometimes it, the difference is just because the lack of understanding may be on both parties, you know, it, that it's an incomplete understanding that we have. And so we think it's a disagreement and we cut ourselves off and, and uh, you know, I, I'm just not a believer in that kind of approach. 
I, I don't think I have all the truth. I don't think I understand everything fully. And if I don't take the time to look at somebody's argument point by point, I may, I may not be corrected when I need to be corrected. Right. Right. There, there may be things that I don't see. So that's the way that we've, we've approached our study. At least, you know, that's the only reason that we're doing this as far as I can see is we want to understand the truth. And, and we're not, I mean, we're reading Uriah Smith, right? Correct. Well, we may disagree on some points, but there are points that, you know, we can find that by examining what he's saying, that we can either be corrected or we can even understand things that we didn't understand before. And um, so that's why we've taken so long. And this is study number 234, no, 244 or something like that, you know, on, on Daniel's last vision. And, and we're not done yet. There's still, and that's, you know, one and a half hour studies. Um, so there's, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I, you know, I don't think when it comes to what Jeff is doing and what the Canadian group is doing, that it really concerns us, to be honest. They're going to do what they do. You know, it, it would be nice if, you know, we could have conversations with them, but at present we can't. Yeah, and hi, Kelly. Yeah, so we did watch the video that Jeff uh, did, his announcement, his statement. Okay. So, uh, Kelly, do you have uh, thoughts? I just, uh, just, well, I, I just see that, like all of you have probably already discussed, that that move is it's going to create a following of one man, and that leads to things like the Branch Davidians and shepherd's rod and so on it's it's very similar it's it's it was actually quite surprising to to listen to that last night i somehow came across my youtube algorithm and oh an announcement that's interesting and in a way i wasn't surprised but in a way i was to just call it call it like that a, a solid line in the sand but, uh, yeah it, it's unfortunate that that they can't, that we can't follow the council together to discuss these things. It's yeah, because really well, because we know the statement letter twenty one eighteen eighty eight. You know, if a brother differ with you on some points of truth, do not stoop to ridicule. Ridicule. Do not place him in a false light or misconstrue his words, making sport of them. Do not misinterpret his words and wrest them from their true meaning. Now, this is not conscientious argument. And do not present him before others as an heretic when you have not with him investigated his positions, taking the scriptures text by text in the spirit of Christ to show him what is truth. You do not yourself really know the evidence he has for his faith, and you cannot really clearly define your own position. Take your Bible and in a kindly spirit, weigh every argument that he presents and show him by the scriptures if he is in error. When you do this without unkind feelings, you will do not only that which is your duty, and the duty of every minister of Jesus Christ. And, you know, to me, this is extremely important because, you know, in, in my view, the little that, I, that I've seen about what's happened in this particular issue, but I've seen it at other times, is that this council is not followed by Jeff. You know, and he says, you know, there's people that he has confidence in that that's where he gets his information. And so we talked about that earlier, Kelly. But often that the people he has confidence in have misled him. So Dwight shared something and I shared, too, you know, that Jeff has told me that he, he trusts the wrong people all the time, uh, both in uh, the people that he trusts that are are giving him correct information. And, and that they often fail him, they betray him. He, he gave me a whole list of all, he went through all the history of it back in 2016. Of course, that's been added to. Um, and, and often he's been directed, you know, prejudiced against people that he's found out later that that was uh, wrong, you know, that those people were not in error. 
And yet, you know, he continues to do the same thing. And the question, there's two points. One is, you know, he claims that this is the, the movement is the Philadelphia movement, yet it's divided. So that doesn't really bode well for that premise that, that they're Philadelphian right now, because the movement isn't divided. We're Laodicean. And we need to heed the message to the Laodiceans. Um, so, so there's a lot of problems with, with what's being presented there. No. But the question that we have to ask ourselves is what is our position? What is our spiritual condition? Because our focus can't be on what's happening with the American and Canadian group. It has to be what's happening in our own lives. Are we truly following Christ? Are we learning the lessons that we need to learn? Are, are we being teachable? Amen. Now, that's where our focus is on Christ, the Bible, and not what everyone else is doing. Amen. There are two comments that were from the chat. One is a repeat of part of, of this document. Elder Haskell, Elder Loughborough, Elder Butler, these are but few of the old pioneer workers still living who saw the wonderful works that God did to confirm the truth. Those old standard bearers are to be respected. The comment is directly on point. How are we to respect Butler when he pushed the wrong view of the daily and made levels of the inspiration of scripture? That's a very correct comment. The other part, paragraph 12 of manuscript 27, the final sentence is scary. Okay, what, what was this? Um... What we just read. Yeah, this is. I, I just got to bring it up. Uh, so, so it's. To read it. okay, give me the reference again. Paragraph 12 of M, a manuscript 27, 1908. Okay. And you look at the final sentence. Okay. And that sentence reads. When one man thinks that his mind is to outline the large moves in the work of God, that his abilities are to accomplish the greatest work, he limits the power of God to fulfill his purposes in the earth. May this not be said of any of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, our meeting has gone a little longer than normal today. The situations that we are concerned that we are considering are indeed fearful consider this let us consider it further when we uh, assemble again tomorrow does anyone else have any other comment thought or question at this time okay i just can't find this reference so it was manuscript 7 1908 manuscript 27 oh, 27 well that would explain it how come I can't find manuscript 27? I don't know. Because I got letters and manuscripts here. I don't I don't have manuscript 26 or 27 or 28. Do you want me to send a copy of this up to you? Yeah, just send it to me, please. Okay. So if anybody else wants a copy of this, please contact Theodore and he can get it to you in whatever form you need. Yeah. Yes, I would like a copy, definitely. All right. Thank you for your time and attention today. I know that this was a divergence from what we have been studying, but it is, I believe, very much on point with everything that we have been discussing throughout these meetings. Shall we now close with prayer? Loving Father in heaven, we thank you of your great compassion, love, and concern for us. We ask, Father, today for your guidance with Elder Jeff, with everything that, that he has said. However, Father, we know that the work is in your hands and not in the hands of any one person. We look to you, we trust in you to guide us and to direct us so that that which is done may be according to your will. We pray now for your blessing as we go through this day. Help us to consider this that we have studied. May your will be done. May your name be glorified in all ways and in all things. Help us to this end. For this, Father, we ask. For this, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.